live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people with their money, their work, and their relationships. Whether it's friends, romantic, whatever you got going on in your life, we are here to help. I'm John Deloney, joined by my great friend, Rachel Cruz. And we're here to take your calls on just about anything. 888-825-5225. 888 825 Let's go out to Johnny Five in Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, Johnny, what's up? How you doing today? I'm good, man. How about you? Not too bad. Outstanding. What's up? All right. So, um, trying to, uh, I'm going through the baby steps, and I'm looking to maybe kind of uh, work them around. Basically, um, my income is about eighty two, eighty two. And um, I just paid off about $25,000 worth of personal debt, and it freed up about $3,700 a month. And I wanted to find out that um, I have about $16,000 worth of credit card debt, and um, I have it targeted to have those paid off in about three to four months. And it still leaves me uh, with that that, uh, 15% that I could apply to it. And I was wanting to find out, um, one is, could I, is it okay to invest that? um, Or should I take that 1242 and still attack credit cards? Or could I turn around and still um, start the investing uh, as I'm attacking the credit card debt? How old are you, Johnny? I'm 47. And that's, I think that's the call to action, (laughs) you know. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I was just curious, yeah, where where you were because here's the deal. I mean, how much how much interest are you paying on those credit cards? Um, combined, I mean, it, it kind of varies and stuff, but um, half of them. There's probably about uh, ten of them that I have, and the most expensive or the the most debt that I have on one of them, I think, is like thirty five hundred. The rest of them. No, but like, what's the interest um, you're paying? Yeah, what are you paying on those? Uh, um, you know what? I really haven't calculated it, but if I had to guess, the the average ones are probably close to 18, 19%. 20%. Yeah, that's what I was probably going to guess. Um, because here's the deal. We, the, the baby steps are in order for a reason, and you're going to have opportunity costs on either side, but you're going to come out better when you eliminate debts. You're not paying that extra interest of 20, some of the credit cards up to 22%. I mean, it's wild, the interest rate right now. Right. And so... What you're doing is you're eliminating that, not just the fact that it's debt and it's risk, but also from the mathematical standpoint, so much interest that's paying out versus, you know, and then once you pay all of that, then to press play and go and invest. And then, you know, on average, 10, 11 percent that you'll gain, but you'll be able to invest more and more consistently without having these credit cards. So without a shadow of a doubt, Johnny, even with your age, it is still the answer of, yes, take that extra cash pay it off quickly and and stop yeah playing the credit card game. I mean, have you have you eliminated and cut up and gotten rid of the 10 credit cards? Yeah, I essentially um they uh, I I committed uh, plastic surgery. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Minute. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And and again, I know it can feel unnerving not to be saving for your future and having retirement there. But here's the deal. You're going to be able to not you're going to be able to knock these credit cards out so quickly like with your income and everything and like you said, like the biggest one's like $3500 or whatever it is. So it's like being able just to have that motivation and paying off those smallest ones and getting them out and then that frees up so much just space financially with margin, but also space emotionally just to know that you don't you don't have that risk. I want that all 100%. I want that I want that to haunt you that you're 47 and you're not putting money into retirement because you're still cleaning up old mess. Let that be the jet fuel that gets that nonsense out of your life quick. 100%. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, and that's what I've done. I've already paid off like two of them. Um, and you know, I know that they compile interest and so I'm trying to compile my payments. So I took the smallest one, um, or essentially the smallest two paid them off. And then I'm just attacking them. I actually have them labeled uh, one through twelve or one through ten, whatever they Good. are. Yeah. And so, and I just plan on doing it. And then every time that I pay something off, you know, if it was a uh, hundred dollars that I paid towards that card that I paid off, I would put it towards the next one up. And so I've, I've been compiling the payments in that aspect. But okay. you know, I'm still sitting here looking at this extra money, and I'm like, oh my gosh, why can't I just go ahead and start investing it? What's, but, what's your next? Okay. What's your next biggest uh, credit card that you have to pay off? Um, next one is going to be twenty two ninety five. Paid off right now, right now. Okay. 
by the end of this show, you should have that one knocked out. Because you got 30 something okay. hundred, you got 30, what, $500 burning a hole in your pocket. Pay that next debt off. Now, you, now you've just knocked one out. Now you only have a few, you have nine left, right? You're just going to keep knocking them out. Right. Get them done, man. Okay. For sure, for sure. And then, um, you know, I've got two houses right now. My one house is paid off that I live in, and then I have a rental that actually brings in some passive income. Um, and so. Well, you're passively you going know, broke, yeah. too. Sell that house. Can you afford it? Um, oh yeah, hands down. The payment's like four hundred and fifty bucks a month. Uh, I bought it um, as a foreclosure, and then um, and it, I paid like forty five thousand dollars for it. It's a stick built on a little lot in a rural area, and it it's I've had uh, I've had renters in it for five years now, six years. And how much total debt do you have, Johnny? Not including that heck, that uh, extra house. Not including the house, um, I, paid, I, went, I drove a well and I got some personal loans and I got those paid off. In fact, I just paid off six thousand yesterday. Good. But um, my monthly bills. Um, no, no, no my, not my monthly, monthly bills. Overhead. Yeah, just in general, and all of it. Is it just the credit cards left? Was it sixteen thousand? You said. And, yeah, that's it. And that's yeah. it. Okay. I, and then the thirty-five hundred dollars a month is what my um, all of my bills are. My electric, all that. Okay. And um, and any savings. Yeah, about fifteen. Fifteen thousand in savings. Yeah. Okay. Could be more, but um, I would. But, no, um, dude. Johnny, no. Johnny. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. what I would do is, um, because with the baby steps, again, it's it's you have a thousand dollar emergency fund, and then you take everything else. So honestly, Johnny, you could be almost debt free by the end of today. Today. And that's what I would do. I would yeah. I would go down to a thousand dollars, pay everything off, and then start saving that back up. And then that changes. It's out of order. I feel like what you're doing. You're all over things the like, place. Yeah, Everything sure. all at once. So yeah, if you, if you. I've been kind of shuffling it a little bit. I yeah. I mean, man. Just follow the plan. Yeah, but, and you have great progress because I'm like, you, you have, you're, you're making great money. You know, you're able, you're, you're motivated to do stuff, which is great. I just think just tilting that motivation and going in one direction versus trying to do 18 different things is going to help you see more progress and feel more secure. So if you hold on the line, Austin's going to pick up and we'll throw in a copy of Total Money Makeover, uh, which is Dave's best-selling book. But it walks you through very simply the baby steps I and mean, you could read it in one night. But but honestly, Johnny, just do these things in order. And you, and you have the motivation and you have the cash coming in. Like it's there. It's all there. The pieces are just doing them together by getting out of debt, building up an emergency fund, then investing in retirement. Do it in that order and you're going to do great. You're going to do awesome. And pay that house off soon. You know, $45,000 for a house is great. Well, Oh, yeah, and then, and then so, you've got then you've got two paid for houses. Yeah, one I mean that you're, you're gonna renting. be you're gonna be doing great. So just do them in a correct order. Honestly, Johnny, since that's since the house is only that much, I would just almost throw it in the, into the it, debt it, snowball. I, I would. That's I like would. what people pay for a car. Exactly. Awesome. Well, they pay more than that. And I think it's important to call out. You mentioned One Direction. That's George Camel's favorite band. <laughs> it's amazing. Hey, triple eight eight two five five two two five. Give us a shout. We'll be right back. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry, but listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Rachel Cruz, taking your calls, 888-825-5225. Today's question comes from Ella in Nevada. Ella writes, my partner and I used a lot of your advice in our day-to-day lives, and I desperately need your advice. He's 22, I'm 21, and currently pregnant. 
We're both in college and still financially dependent on our parents, but want to become independent to support our new family. Problem is, partner says he does not want to get married until sometime after we move in together and the baby's born. I don't want to get married just because we're having a child, but we've been dating for three years and have had this conversation before. I don't understand why there's so much pushback now and when it's more important now than ever that we get married. He claims that finances and the timing do not work out, but he knows I don't want an expensive ring or wedding. I only want to make it official. Why is he holding back? And is it time for me to draw a firm line saying I will not play house with him? Mm. Whoa. What do you like, think, Rachel? What, what I was going to say, Dr. John Deloney, <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it's like the, uh, I've been learning, I don't know why I'm probably late to the game, attachment styles. He sounds like an oh, avoidant. Yeah. yeah, oh, big time. Yeah. yeah. Um, it sounds, man, there's so much he's here. He's stressed. I mean, he's 22. Yeah. This Girlfriend's is, pregnant. He, you're in college. Yeah. He may not have any money. And and he feels like, I can't. Changed. Yeah. And now, and to be responsible for a child yeah. and a wife probably feels like a lot of pressure for him. Right. No, no question about it. And I will say this as a guy who did my first kid was in my late, late 20s. Like we waited a long time. Mm -hmm. I did not fully understand the responsibility of what was coming our way when my wife got pregnant. She understood that v immediately. Mm. And it took me I, I had to learn. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. not an excuse, but I didn't I didn't fully understand what was happening or how much our life was going to change. And so um, there is that. The other side of it is. Um, Y'all are 21 and 22, and now y'all just got thrown into grown-up land. Yeah. Right? Real, real fast. He, I, I, I'm just going to be honest. He may not want to marry you, mm -hmm. and he may not have been planning on marrying you. And you say, well, we've been together three years. That doesn't matter. Yeah. It might have been a college romance for him, and then he's going to move on with his life. And so all that to say is I don't think – y'all. you're talking about rings or weddings. I think y'all are on way different pages. I would recommend y'all go sit down with a a – relationship counselor, even a marriage counselor, have the conversation about how you're going to co-parent and start from there. Yeah, because Ella, I mean, all, only what you can control is you in the situation. And so I would be talking to your parents and saying, hey, once this baby comes, because I mean, they're still being financially supported by parents. Am I off the payroll? And are you going to still be with, you know, what? how can I create a life for me and my baby? Right. And, and then you have to decide, is he going to be a part of it still? Mm. Or is this a deal breaker for her to say, like, if he's not going to commit to this, I'm out. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, and, and she doesn't, nobody, well, let me say it like this. I've had this conversation. I can't even tell you how many times with college students that, and then their, and their parents and some parents would say, you went and did this, you're out of yeah. our life, which I think is a terrible choice. Yes. It's a terrible decision. I've never seen parents not regret that move. The other one was, I don't want to keep paying for tuition, but I also know now my daughter's going to be a single mom dropping out of college as a senior. I understand the statistics tell me what trajectory that's on. All right, so I'm going to pay for an apartment and I'm going to pay mm -hmm. for college to get her out of. So y'all sit down and have that conversation. You just have to create your life. And which means, Ella, you've got to move forward as though you're a single mom of a new baby mm -hmm. and with a boyfriend. And that's the plan you have to make for housing, for childcare. And that means you have to sit down with your parents. As much as you want him to be involved, he's telling you, I'm not going to be involved. And that's heartbreaking. That's sad. It's whatever. But like Rachel said, you got to deal with reality on this one. Yuck, 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 mm. yuck. And by the way, for all those out there, Rachel, talk to people who say, well, oh, I don't want to get married yet because of our finances. Yeah, I would never stop a life choice like getting married, even having a baby of waiting on the finances to be in a good, a good spot. Because the truth is that that finish line can keep moving now. It can it, and can it be less stressful if you have money saved and all the things and then you have a baby? Sure. But also, I don't want you waiting till, oh, I get out of debt and we this, this and this to start your family. I'm like, your family's like number one, right? right? Like there's a priority level in the sense of if there's something in your life, a change like marriage or a baby, just do it. Do it. And then you can figure out the money piece. But and you again, could, you could do it together. Yes. That's the other thing. And there's this, this, this big cultural lie that I've got to be perfect and then right. they've got to be perfect. And then we come together. It's nonsense. You'll never be fully you yep. in isolation like that. So yep. man, get married, go do, do your, do your thing. Um, yeah. The ring and the expensive wedding is kind of off the table right now. Y'all are two college kids that are having a baby. So if you're going to do it, let's just do it and we'll do the other stuff later. Um, 
But yeah, it's time for you to A, draw firm lines, and B, you've got to start getting your life in order because you got a baby coming, whether this deadbeat's going to be in the in the life of, of you two or not. And uh, yeah, there we go. We'll go, to, we'll go out to Tampa and talk to Beth. Hey, Beth, what's up? Hi. Um, <clears throat> so I have a question. Um, I am following the baby steps, currently in baby step two, trying really hard to get the rest of my debt paid off. Um, most of the debt I have left is in my car, so I am looking to get rid of it and get something that costs a lot less so I can get out of debt faster. Um, but I am upside down on the car loan, so I'm not sure, like, the best way to go about getting rid of this. Sure. Um, how much How much do you owe on it? How much is left on it? I owe about 18400 Okay. And how much is it worth? Um, I was just at the dealership the other day and talked to them. They said they would probably only take like nine or ten for it. Okay, and dealership is the more expensive route, or you're going to get less of less of the money for that car at a dealership because they have to do a markup because they have to turn around and sell it, inventory, all of that. So your best bet is through a private party. But how much do you make a year, Beth? Um, just under sixty thousand. Oh, okay, you know what, Beth? Keep the car. Keep the car. Pay it off. Yeah, and pay it off. You're fine. Because our rule of thumb is if you can't pay it off in 18 months or if it's more than half of your annual income, that's when you have way too much card and it's going to be hard to get traction and progress. But with these numbers, I mean, you'll you'll be able to do it. Okay. Um, I guess the other part of it, why I'm trying to get rid of it too, is because I, I actually have a Kia. I'm not sure if you know about the problems going on with them right now. Um, but I can't get it insured. And for me to be able to get it insured, it's like way out of my price range is a ridiculous amount of money to try to get it insured. I'm, I'm at the point where it's time to renew my policy and I really am having trouble like trying to afford the insurance on it. So that's well, all the insurance, I was trying to get rid of it. Okay. Yeah. All insurance is, is through the roof right now. So yeah, you do want an insurable car, but what, what I mean, about, what about a Kia makes it uninsurable? I've never heard that. Uh, so they've been having a lot of issues lately. There's certain models, and I think mine is one of them, that they were not made with some kind of like security system, like anti-theft, and they're really easy to steal. Um, I did talk to like some insurance companies, and they did tell me, like, yeah, my Kia is the problem. Like, They're not insuring Kias, almost a lot of insurance companies. And did Kia not have a recall? And to fix it? I'm not sure. Yeah, you can't have, you can't have an uninsurable car on the road. Yeah. You yeah. Can't, yeah, all cars yeah. have to be insured on the road. So there's got to be some, my goodness. And, it's, and, and I think some it's, fix. And, and in a sense too, though, Beth, I think that, I don't know, you'll have to run out the numbers, but taking an $8,000 hit on a car just because of insurance doesn't sound right, doesn't sound worth it to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So again, I would still shop around. And, and again, it's, um, I mean, all insurance is up right now. Like we're seeing that across the board on all, in almost all states. Um, it's it, a lot. And so- yeah, I, I would hate for you to take a eight thousand dollar hit though on something that you're going to be able financially to pay off. But again, I don't I don't know what the insurance is telling you. How much How much are you paying now, and how much are they quoting you? Um. Well, right now it's like almost five hundred dollars a month for just my one car and just me as a driver. And how much are they quoting you for the future? It's about the same. It really hasn't um, not gone up too much, like maybe a little more, but it's just, it's hard because I had paid it in full um, before. So now that it's like time okay. to renew, I can't afford to pay it in full again or like the monthly. So I didn't have the monthly insurance payment before. Which call, our I'm friends have at, now call, call our friends at Xander and call a local, um, endorsed local provider in your area. I just got a message from my brother-in-law, a uh, family member this morning, that said he reached out to a local ELP for the first time and they knocked $300 off. It's a great crew. Um, yeah, they shop all different companies, yeah, Beth. It amazing. It's not just one specific. So yeah, check out Xander.com uh-huh. um, through Ramsey. And a local, uh, endorsed local provider. Thanks for the call, man. And we need to dig into this uh, Kia game. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. 
We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 40% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. All right, folks, a lot of you have questions about taxes. We get it. They're confusing. You don't like paying them. It's kind of like the government says, hey, we know how much money uh, you owe us, but you figure it out and send us a check. And if you're wrong, then you have to go to jail. We know that it's the worst, right? And people say, uh, here, here's a question from one of our listeners. We normally have someone do our taxes, but our accountant retired. I think we have a simple return. Should we try to file ourselves with Ramsey Smart Tax? You can for sure use a software like Ramsey Smart Tax if you feel confident filing on your own and your situation is relatively simple. We, we recommend working with a tax pro when you had a major life change, like somebody retired, you got a big inheritance, you adopted a child, or if you own a business, or if you're not confident about filing your own taxes, or if you just want to save time and stress and just outsource it to somebody else. If you're confident about filing your own taxes, head to RamseySolutions.com slash tax. You're going to have Ramsey Smart Tax with low upfront pricing, no hidden fees, no trying to sell you something on the back end so that we can all get richer. Everybody shakes hands on the front end of this deal. Or you can connect with a Ramsey Trusted Tax Pro. Again, all of that can be found at RamseySolutions.com slash tax. Let's go out to the Utahs in Salt Lake City and talk to, well, 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 my Michelle. What's up, Michelle? Hello there. How you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Excellent. What's up? So I have a question. Um, my husband and I, we own two homes, and our, par- our primary home is paid off. It has about $550,000 in equity, and then we have an investment property that we owe about $90,000 on, and that equity is around $700,000. We have both of these homes in an irrevocable trust, naming our daughter as the sole beneficiary. It was set up that way originally because my husband's son was not in our lives at the time, but he has since come into our lives. And my husband originally had approached me and said, hey, I want him included as a beneficiary. We need to change the irrevocable trust. I was in agreement that he should be a beneficiary um, sometime in the future when are we when we demise but recently he came to me and said that he wants his son actually to be able to move here to utah and the only way for him to be able to afford to do that is if we give him the rental property and so Mm. i'm not in agreement with that because i don't think it's wise from a financial standpoint for us we don't have any other assets we don't have any debt but we also don't have any other assets so we're not in a position to really be just giving somebody a property outright yeah, how old's his son? His son is 40 years old. And why isn't his son able to afford to move where his son wants to move? So they do have a home where they live. Where we live is very expensive. The average home is between So he can't and afford to live he there. He can't afford to live there. He can't afford to live here, yes. And and that's why my husband is like, well, he can if we give him this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. That doesn't sound like a. That doesn't sound good. And what about your daughter? So, and that's the that's the other thing too. She she would be in agreement if because she just wouldn't want to be confrontational. She'd be like, okay, that's fine if that's what you want to do. But of course, she's going to be hurt if she, if he's given a house that she originally thought she was with seven hundred thousand dollars of equity. I'd be pissed. I'm yeah, sorry. What? Yes. Well, th- so it sounds we like we have a greenhouse on the property, and my husband is wanting to create a CSA in the future. So his other thing was, is he said, "Oh, you know, he'll be here to carry on my name and keep my keep the greenhouse." It sounds like your hu- uh, it sounds community. like a husband issue more than the son issue. Dude, this is a hundred percent a husband issue. Here's what it sounds like: sounds like he is trying to buy back lost years. Mm. 
and you and can't that, you can't do that. Yeah, that's my feeling too. You can't that, do that. I, You're gonna throw so money emotional. into a, into a fire pit, and it's don't do it. Don't do it. He's gonna compromise his relationship with his son. He's gonna compromise his relationship with his wife and his daughter. It's just gonna become a mess. If he wants to rent this house, if y'all want to rent this house to him, even at a discount, fine for a season. Um, but it also sounds like if he's back in the picture. You fighting for, no, 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 we have a will, and it's only one kid. Well, if there's two kids in the picture, then maybe I'll need to sit down and redo your will. But this whole thing is a much bigger conversation. Yeah, the will is one thing. Giving them just a house right now when he can't afford Yeah, it's just, to that's move just there, madness. Y'all can't afford feel. it. He can't afford it. Nobody can afford this. Right. And he wa- and your husband wants to make up for lost time and be around his son. I, I totally understand that. The problem is this gnarly, ugly reality called math it doesn't work. Because this is your retirement. Right. Is that what you were saying? That you guys, you guys don't even have a lot. Like this is it. Well, we're right. Our primary home is paid off, and both homes have a lot of equity. We ha- we have some gold, some silver, a little bit of that. But yeah, we don't have anything else. When we retire, we'll depend on our social security. Yeah. So I think that's why the would he give away three quarters of a million dollars of your financial future? Because he's know, emotional. He wants, to a 40-year-old who... I, I think, I, so I think he originally is like, we probably aren't ever going to sell this property because we're going to put the, the greenhouse on there and we're going to have a CSA. But we don't know what the future brings. We don't know if the CSA will be successful. We don't know if we'll ever need to live in that house and sell this house. There's a lot of we don't, unknowns. And I feel like... Does your husband a gardener? Another way. Is he a gardener? No, he's not a gardener. He just recently decided that he, he with the way things are in the world and food security... Yeah, I would get like, a... I, I would, so I, awesome. I would get a third party uh, involved, Michelle. I would sit down with a good therapist or a counselor, and you guys need to hash it out. Because again, this is... When you get down to it, what John said, I'm like, it's not even like... The house isn't the problem. It's everything underneath. It's the motivation behind it that's unhealthy. Well, it's him it's watching that, a lot of YouTube, the way the world's going. We gotta have we gotta start our garden oh, up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen. It might be me. <laughs> just as an I know it's Rachel for sure. Like as a guy who lives on some acres outside of town and, and has gardens, we've got enough produce we share she with loves, all of our neighbors. My yeah, wife's yeah, amazing. Great. Yeah. But even she after last year canning jarring we've got jars and cans everywhere our neighbors are gaining weight she said this year <laughs> from the fruits and vegetables yeah from the vegetables the yeah. Garden. she said hey i'm not doing that this year that's crazy right well, that's what i told my husband we don't know that his son he may come here he's and that just may be being he's emotional Michelle. he's emotional there's so much baggage and so much wound. i mean he's, he's anxious he's he anxious is. there's he's anxious. so much there and i really would i would sit down with their party because he's not listening to you his, no, his wife and the fact that y'all aren't a team and an agreement is a, is always a red flag. The red flag goes up and that happens in every marriage, right? To a point, like something Not goes mine, up. mine, yours, Rachel. And it's it's perfect. We agree on everything <laughs> all the time. Well, and, I, and I don't want to be the bad stepmom that didn't let the son come live here because I'm not a- The a math. No. Blame the <laughs> math. The math isn't mathing, as you, the Gen Zers say, the, I hear. You're the, you're the, the planner. You're the um, wonderful- a sturdy human being who's saying, hey, I don't want to give away three quarters of a million dollars to a 40-year-old no, man everyone, who yeah, has a job exactly. and a family of his own. Right. And that we need to figure out, and if he wants to move here and he truly wants to move here, then we can certainly help facilitate that and figure out how to do that. But it can't be, it can't, this isn't well, let me let me let me, sh- let me flip it in reverse. My parents live in a really, in, in, in a great house in Texas, in central Texas, in a small town. They are talking about moving to Nashville. Their living living experience is going to be radically different. And they know that. So if they move here, it's not going to be apples to apples. Right, because living in Nashville is infinitely more expensive and than like living basics, in a small like town. Texas. Groceries and restaurants, groceries, and like, like it's, gas, it's, it's yeah, it's, moving right. around, yeah. real estate, all of it's different. So yeah. there's just a reality to it. And that's why Rachel, like what she's saying is dead on. This, this is none of this is happening in reality. That I'm going to start a, a gardening company and save my neighborhood, and then my son is going to carry on our legacy. By the way, the son that I didn't have much of a relationship because he cut me off or was out of the picture or whatever, whatever was going on back then. And so let's go ahead and give him a three-quarter of a million-dollar house. Forget the will. Forget the trust. Forget our joint kid. We don't care about that person. We're just going to do it. Like, all this is in madness. And this is a guy who is spinning out. 
spinning out. He needs to sit down and talk to somebody. Y'all need to talk to somebody and begin to, to, to paint a picture that is rooted in reality. Yes. And there's such a beautiful redemption part of this story, right? I'm like, they've reconnected. Yeah, it's amazing. They want to be close to each other, like in, in even proximity of living close together. Like, I mean, all of it is so good, but just do it the right way. And throwing a house at the situation of someone that can't afford that part of the country or that part of the state, it's going to do more harm. And then in the meantime, fracturing relationships, possibly with your daughter, with you, Michelle, because you're not fully on board. I mean, all of it. So, so there's a, a right way for this relationship to be healthy and so good. And what a gift, right? What a gift. But just don't let the money be the, you know, the muddling, mudding it all, all up. Ugh, this is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with a real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country and they're Ramsey trusted because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started. This is The Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Rachel Cruz, 888-825-5225, taking your calls on money, life, relationships, parenting, all of it. Let's go out to Oklahoma City and talk to Brandy. Hey, Brandy, what's up? Hi, John and Rachel. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, okay, so I'm really nervous, but um, I just started baby step number two. And it's super, super overwhelming. Um, but I did have a question regarding one specific debt because I don't really know um, what to do with it or where I should place it. All Go right. For it. What what is it? Okay, so it's it's a it's a debt settlement um, company, and I am currently I've paid two. It was a, it was for a credit card settlement. I've paid two off. I have two that they have negotiated that I'm currently paying, and then I have two that are unsettled. So I don't really know if I should, because um, I'm really scared because I don't know. I don't want them to like take my money and run without paying for it, without paying them off. So I don't know if I should wait until they settle the last two or if I should just try to get out of it or how to do that. I'm just really confused. Is that your only debt? Are these four? Oh, no, no it, it, it is not my only debt. I have um, like 110000 total in debt. Okay. And what are the last two? What types of debt are they? Um, there, um, one is like a small bill to like AT and T. It's like three hundred dollars. It's not very much. And then it's a credit card to Wells Fargo. And how much is that one? It's four thousand two seventy two, and that has the one that has not been settled yet. Okay. And th those two though are the ones that are not settled, correct? Right. They're, they're um, I guess, would be like still in negotiation. Okay. Guess, okay. And where are you guys at in that? negotiation because I would hate for you to pay on it and you guys settle for a less than amount right in writing that you're able to that that's the amount you actually pay yeah. for when do you think it'll be yeah, settled so um so the the estimated settlement date is like September or October okay um, I'm I'm expected to graduate the program is what they call it um in June of 2025 and if I were to continue to just make some two hundred and twenty dollar payment that I make a deposit into there every month, it would be like three thousand something that I would still owe. So I have included the four thousand two hundred into my total debts. I know if that gets negotiated, it'll go down, but I'm not really sure how to navigate that. If I should just continue to just pay on it like the minimum payment, or if I should like throw because it would be it would be pretty like quick into my debt snowball if 
if if it was just this amount. So I'm not really sure where I should put it or what I should do in regards to right, right. Go about yeah, well, it, yeah. the $300 one, I probably, I mean, that feels like it could just be settled, right? I'm like, you could just pay it off and it would just be gone, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Um, I can I can probably get that one done. That one, that one kind of popped up on me like a few months ago and they kind of just took it over. So I could probably get that one taken care of. Like, really okay, quickly, are you like, able to get out of this? Pro- what, what kind of program? When you said we're in a, I'm in a program until 2025. Y- yes, yes. So um, I started a debt settlement program. It was November of 2020 where basically I just, all of my credit card debt, I just, Gave, they, gave they to them and then they it for me. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. Are you in a Are you in and a I, contract with them? Or are you able to get out of this whole like thing? All of this. So, so yeah, I'm not actually. I don't actually know on on that. I'm not sure how they work. Um, okay. I had gotten a divorce like four years ago, and I, I was kind of in a hard place, and okay. I didn't have any other option. But now I understand that it's not a good thing. Sure, sure. I've, it's okay. already happened, so I can't really do. Anything. Well, it's already happened. You can though. I want you to. Okay. your path forward is you taking back your autonomy, taking back your power in this, okay? It's your yeah. money and it's your bills. If you've signed a contract, like Rachel said, you've signed a contract and there's no way out. But I would want to know how much you've paid off since 2020, four years later. My okay. guess is you've been paying money into a, a, a into a goat, like into a hole in the ground, and then you're still going to owe a whole bunch of money when this is all settled. Yeah, and with their fees, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus their fees. So they've just burned your credit to the ground. They've burned mm-hmm. your um, ability to get yourself out of this to the ground. And they've taken their fee money, and you're going to get done. You're still going to owe yeah. $90,000 on yeah. all this. Yeah, well, are you, is it just the four debts that are with them? The two that are settled and then the two that are unsettled? Um, yeah, so I started with, with seven. I have paid three of those off over the since I've been in the program. So you have, I have four left. Two that they've nego- yeah, yeah, two that I'm currently paying on that they've negotiated. Um, I've made 22 of 24 payments on one and 28 of 36 on the other. I'm not sure why they divided up like that, but um, okay. that's the number. So what I would I do, Brandy, is I would call them and just say, hey, I went out. I went out. And what can I do? And you may get charged a penalty for that, whatever it may be. But I, I don't want these people. Th- these people don't need to settle for you. Like you, you have the debt. We're going to figure out a plan with you right now to to pay it all off on your own without them. I just don't want them part of your life. And if you can just get out clean and and some of the money for the last four years may have been going into a black hole and we just call that stupid tax that we do things and we're yeah, like, I yeah. don't know why I did that, but I did it. It's where I was. And now we're going to move forward. So I would call them today, Brandy, and what and whatever and, and just say, stop all the negotiations, all of it. I'm out. I'm done. Can Can you just give me everything back in my name fully even um, the way they call it you graduate <laughs> as though you're getting yeah, like I, you're, uh, that, that, that language I, is so manipulative all of it okay so brandy walk yeah, me through because really, you have a lot of debt and i want to know your whole i want to know the whole picture walk me through every piece of debt that you have okay um so um between me and my husband our total take-home pay is right at a hundred thousand it's like ninety nine thousand like okay. eight hundred so and then my total debt is a hundred and ten thousand and sixty six thousand like eight hundred is student loans okay. and um my student loan payment is the highest payment of anything that i okay. have including okay. my rent so i'm trying to figure yeah. out a way because that just overwhelms me and i hate it sure like, sure and then the other four debts that you have with this is and then uh, and those yeah, are what and again then i have um Thirty-three thousand in auto loans between three vehicles. I have a vehicle. My husband have a vehicle, and then um, he has a child with a vehicle that he pays on. Okay, how much are that, that's the most, okay? I owe twelve twelve on mine. He owes four on his, and then the child's vehicle is like eighteen thousand. Oh 500. my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah. How much could you sell that for? Um, or it's his child. I'm guessing this is a this is a second marriage. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure um, if I would be able to, to really because that was his gift to his kids. So I don't really know if I I want to try to. I would just rather pay that debt down. I don't. I don't know that I would rather. I don't want to wrestle. Want to get okay. Because, so here's yeah, the thing. Okay. Yeah. So I hear you. I hear you. But also, yeah. Brandy, 
you have to realize that when you are married and you guys are together in this, that if you guys mm-hmm. can combine everything, and when I say that, it's like we're combining debts, we're combining incomes, we're combining budgets. Like we are all one. You basically, you know, magnify sometimes the debt because one one person has the student loans, one person doesn't. But you also magnify the opportunity. And there's something about locking arms and doing this together, Brandy, that's really your best shot of getting out of this the fastest and the most efficient is when you and your husband together say, we're on this plan to get out of debt together. And it's not just Brandy over here spinning her wheels mm-hmm. and trying to figure all this out. And so how how willing is he just in general to to do this money stuff together? Oh, he's he's very on board. Um, I That is one thing I have not talked to him about is specifically that vehicle. Okay. So that's, that's one conversation we have. And maybe that's on me for avoiding that just because I'm not a con- I don't, I, I'm conflict averse, so maybe that's part well, of the problem. But um, I could have that conversation with him. So your conflict aversion, maybe you are, but but let this be the moment, right? A conflict aversion. Mm-hmm. You hired a company to deal with some of your debts, and it's cost you a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of heartache. There's particular debts on the table in your home right now that you don't want to talk about, and. You, you can create a story about how, hey, you know what, that's really not mine to talk about. But as Van, Bessel, Bessel, Bessel van der Kolk says, your body's keeping the score on this one, okay? It knows that you're not all right. So put all the debts on the table. Let's go through all the debts. Let's and get, talk to uh, him that you're scared. I mean, Brandy, that you're you're stressed, yeah, right? Like, yeah. come with him and just say, I want to do this together. And I, I, I just feel like it's an uphill battle. And it's not. You guys can do this. You can, but yeah, you, bring it the, forward. The, the money you make and the um, amount of debt you owe, you can do this. You all can do it. Hang on the line. We're going to send you Financial Peace University Total Money Makeover as our gift. That's one hour in the books. We'll be right back on The Ramsey Show. in Franklin, Tennessee. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people with their money questions, with questions about doing work that they love and their life and relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined by my good friend, Rachel Cruz, and we're taking your calls on just about anything. Give us a buzz at 888-825-5225. It's 888-825-5225. If we don't know an answer, we will make one up. Let's go out to Sacramento, California, and talk to Austin. Hey, Austin, what's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for taking my call. You bet, man. We're partying. Uh, What's up? So uh, a little bit newer to the Dave Ramsey Show, and I've been listening to the podcast the last couple days, so uh, just a lot has kind of come out. So I Hey, 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 hey. 90- welcome to the cult, my friend. We're glad you're here. <laughs> oh We're glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah. what's up? <laughs> uh, so I have about $90,000 in student loan debt. Um, just a little bit of out-of-state tuition, being irresponsible, and I'm currently getting my MBA right now, too, and I'm a little more than halfway through. Um, I also have a car loan that has about 12000 left on it, and the value is about 16000 or so. I don't have any credit cards anymore. got rid of all the credit card debt and credit cards. Um, I have about $18,000 saved up right now as an emergency fund with about 10000 of it in a high-yield savings account and the other in my checking and savings. I also have <laughs> – it's a lot, but 10% going to my high-yield savings every month just to save up for tuition so I don't have to add to the student loans, of course. Um, and then I also have my 401k. It does up to a 4% match. I'm contributing 10% right now. So my question is this one to start, should I keep putting money in my 401k right now, either the 10%, the 4% just to get the match or none. And then the second part of that question is if I get aggressive, I can probably pay off my car in I think nine months to a year or so when there's about two and a half years left on it. Um, but if I were to pay on my student loans right now while I'm in school, it would go directly towards the principal. So 
which one should I go after? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. And then I do have a little, yeah. What do, you, what do you do for work? Uh, consulting, management consulting. Okay. How much are you making? Uh, base is 84. Okay. Um, what are you in school for? Uh, getting my MBA. Okay. And you have two years left of that, correct? Uh, next spring. So a little less than a year. Okay, good. Or, okay. Sorry, and you're, and you're able year. to yeah. cash flow the rest of that. Like as you look out, you won't be taking on more debt for that. Yeah. If I, if I save the 10%, it'll cover about half of that. So I can pull out of my emergency fund and do it. Um, yeah. just looking at the, the baby steps, I, you know, I have, the yeah. uh, so Rachel, Rachel's going to walk, to step two. Rachel's going to walk you through this brother, but here's what I want to say. Yeah. You are a driven, smart guy. And so we are, we are totally team Austin. Here's what I'm seeing from a 30,000 foot view. You're in it. There's bullets flying. There's smoke everywhere. You're in it every day. You are trying to do everything all at the same time. And mm-hmm. you're slowly leaking money everywhere. And so you're not, it, so mm-hmm. like you are paddling so hard. The way you are paddling is so admirable, but you're not getting anywhere because there's water coming in all over the place. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Rachel's going to outline it for you, but you're going to have to make some short-term sacrifices to get where you want to get. And when you get there, it's going to be much better up, up on arrival. Okay. Okay. Got okay it. So- I do have one quick wrinkle to add to it. Okay. Uh, my fiance inherited some money and she offered to no, pay no, off no, my no, car. no, okay. don't do that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Don't do that. <laughs> if Not you, yet, hey, if you take her to the courthouse this weekend and get married, then it's y'all's money. But until then, don't take her money. Don't take one penny of it. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah. Okay? Got it. I um, want to do that anyway. Perfect. Okay, so you owe 12 on the car, but it's worth 16. Yeah. Sell yeah. it tomorrow. Okay, here's what I would do, Austin, if I woke up in your shoes, because that's always kind of how we frame this scenario. If I woke up in your shoes tomorrow, I would take maybe two to three thousand out of the emergency funds, and mm-hmm. that leaves me with fifteen thousand. And I would add that three thousand to the four thousand that you will get when you sell your car, <laughs> and I would go get like an eight nine thousand dollar car, and I would pay cash for it okay. and be done with that debt completely. Like you're you're done so okay. So then you're done. Then you're down to fifteen thousand left in your emergency fund. I would pause investing mm-hmm. completely, and my next focus would be to do anything I could to save up a hundred percent to pay and finish out your MBA. That would be my next goal. And then once you okay. are completely out of school, all is good. Then I would start attacking the ninety thousand in student loans. Okay. Um, because yeah, while it would go to the end to the pens- to the principal, um, which would be that's great, obviously, but there, you don't owe it, obviously, until after graduation. And so um, yeah. I almost just w- I would I would just my number one sole focus would be to get my MBA without taking on any more debt. And then once you're out of school, do you think you guys will get married soon after? And I'm not asking because of the inheritance. I'm just asking in general. <laughs> do you, like, will you guys? No, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a date for uh, next year, next year, March. Oh, awesome. OK, so you, so right yeah. before you graduate, you'll be married. Yes. And how much does she make a year? Uh, it's a little variable. She she left her corporate job. She is doing life coaching. So the low end this year will be fifty. The high end will be like one fifty. But she hasn't made on she hasn't made one fifty though yet, right? She's made fifty. No. Okay. Yeah. But the hope is that yeah that it's that it's a little bit more than that. Okay. So you guys will yeah. be she, on the conservative end because you said your base was eighty four. That's a base. So I'm like, once you graduate yeah. everything, I mean, y'all could be. I mean, close to two hundred together yeah right i'm like 150 ish but i mean it'll climb hopefully your opportunities so much Mm -hmm. so you guys could knock out and then with that with her inheritance all of that Mm -hmm. knock out that 90 um so i mean yeah within that you're debt free in in 18 months yeah does will she have any debt coming into the marriage uh no she she's had her car for 17 years and never had a credit card okay wow all right so get get out of debt and get her a car in 18 months (laughs) okay (laughs) Okay, <laughs> but but you yeah. see, but but the order is important, right? Because you're you're the debt that's just kind of com- like just biting your toes on the car is then leaning, and you're mm-hmm. going to make a choice about well, then I just uh, I got to pay this, and so then I'm not going to I'm going to go ahead and take out another student loan just for MBA, but then I'm going to pay the principal over here, mm-hmm. and you're just zigzagging back and forth. You're like a punt returner that's running all over the field. You're just not 
making any forward progress. Yeah, get north and south. That's right. Go downhill. So let's knock the car out. Done. And honey, guess what? I'm buying a $9,000 car. That's how much I love you. And she's going to say, I have this inheritance check. Can I just buy you a nice car? And you could say, nope. <laughs> um, and by yeah. the way, she's going to respect you more in the long run. That you're like, no, 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 yeah, I dug a yeah, hole. Yeah. I'm going to get this thing cleaned up. And then we're going to go to school debt free. We're going to knock that out. And then we're going to just crush the rest of it. And we're going to be good to go. Yeah. How old are you guys? Okay. Uh, I'm 30. She's 33. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So great. Because I'm like, I mean, seriously, Austin, by the time, gosh, you guys are, you know, be death 30, 30, 36. Yeah. I'm like, you're going to have two cars. You'll, you'll, by that point, replace cars, be debt free, killing it when it comes to your jobs and your careers. And by the, I mean, and then you'll be putting money towards retirement after that. I mean, it's just amazing. You guys really will make so much progress, but it's just one thing at a time. And I want you to feel some of that sacrifice now, but make it the goal to finish out the MBA with just cash. And yeah, you guys are killing it. Great job, Austin. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day -day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. This is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Listen, check this out. Join us in Nashville at Ramsey headquarters for our brand new event, Total Money Makeover Weekend on May 10th and 11th. It's going to be a party. In one weekend, you're going to get a crash course on everything we teach about money with all new stuff. Now, here's the deal. Millions of you have joined us in the last couple of years. Like the last caller who said, man, I just went down a rabbit hole. I've been listening to all the podcasts. I'm trying to figure this all out in real time. It's like drinking from a fire hose. This weekend is for you. Okay. It's the 20, is the 25th anniversary of Total Money Makeover? Yes. Or 30th? 30th, 20th? 20, 25th. For you millennials out there, 25th. the book was written before <laughs> you were born and it still works. Not uh, millennials. Gen Z. Whatever. You youngsters. Yeah, millennials are in their 30s. All right, good That's job, millennials. Here. All right, so, hey, it's for you. It's for you. The book is um, getting a, a complete overhaul, um, but the principles are staying the same. It's going to be a live taping of the hit podcast, Smart Money Happy Hour. We're yeah. going to have live interactive Q&As all throughout the weekend. I think Rachel and I are going to do a money marriage thing. So it's going to be a wild party. Dave, Rachel, uh, me, George Campbell, Jade, Ken Coleman, and probably some surprises like always when you get an a Ramsey event. Don't wait to get your tickets. Platinum Plus already sold out, but you can get platinum or VIP tickets if you get them now. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. Total Money Makeover Weekend, May 10th and 11th. All right, let's go out to Indianapolis, Indiana, and talk to Keeley. What's up, Keeley? Hey, thanks for taking my call. I was calling. My husband is obsessed going debt-free, but he won't take <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> How do I get him to take one step at a time? What oh, my it, gosh, what do you mean? What does like, that what, mean? What's happening? Yeah. yeah, what's happening? 
Um, so he, we have about $65,000 in consumer debt, and he just thinks it's possible for us to get it done in just a few months. And Is it's it? It's not realistic for us, no. <laughs> have y'all sat down and made like a plan on paper? We have, we have. We sat down, we started doing budgets, um, taking, making some cuts that we needed to do, and it's still, that, the 65000 isn't even what we make half a year. So where does he where does he get this these numbers from? Um, he just sees all this debt and he just they start running in his mind. They're just they're they're flying at him. Okay, so what so, what is he doing though? Like in so reality, having, that yeah, is he like selling stuff? And you're like, whoa, that's our couch. Don't we, sell our couch. <laughs> like, what's he doing? <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of the thing. He he's willing to sell it all. He's willing for us to sleep on an air mattress at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, but he, we have been selling things. He picked up a side job. I mean, we're we're doing the work towards okay. it. But yeah, he, we haven't even done step one. He skipped step one. Said the emergency fund. We'll get to it later. He's like, I got to get rid of these credit card debts. So I got to get them now. Oh my gosh, I so appreciate his enthusiasm. Okay, so how much do you guys make a year, Keely? Um, about 115000 Okay. And you have 65000 Is that what you said? In debt? In consumer debt. Yep. In consumer debt. Okay. 65000 And mm-hmm. uh, so you y'all have no money saved right now. Like not even $1,000. We have right at 700 Okay. So yes, he needs to bump that up to $1,000. Uh, yep. And then what is... And so again, being specific on your end, because you're calling us saying he's obsessed with it. What do I... <laughs> is it... <laughs> Is it, uh, is it that because you never see him? Is it because it's all he talks about? Is it like, what's, it, what's, it, bo- what's annoying he, you? <laughs> he, that's all he talks about. He's not sleeping at night. Um, just the conversations. We can't have a conversation about our kids, even in the evenings without him being like, well, there's money signs already flying out the window. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So here's, here's what I think is important. Is he a guy that gets this way about a thing and it goes away in three months? Or is this, is this a new husband for you? Uh, this is a total new husband. Okay, so he didn't like when Little League was going to start the first year. He's like, we're going to crush it. He's not that guy. <laughs> no, I mean, he's been the type to always check his bank account to see where he's standing with his money, but never to this extent. We're checking it a thousand times a day. Okay. Okay. So he's just, uh, his body flipped a switch and it's game on, but it's like atomic game on. And it is. Yes. I'm afraid he's going to. <laughs> yeah, he's just, he's just you know, gonna he's go start running, and he's gonna yeah. be that guy who picks up the fumble and runs the wrong way, um, exactly into well, the wrong end zone. Yeah, so I think I think it's just it's a it's a total mindset shift in your household, mm. and mm-hmm. there is a level of momentum that he's actually probably feeling with his money for the first time ever. Yeah, um, and I don't know. This is so stereotypical, but the way we've usually like talked when it comes to men and women with money for women, a lot of people, and this has been through research that our number one fear is security. And, and if the money is not good, I don't feel safe. Right. Like there's that deep feeling for a guy. It can be a sense of like, you know, we've heard, we've said like a scorecard or like there's a sense of um, safety, but also shame. Yes. I put my family in this hole and I'm getting us out today. Yeah. So there's like a motivator yeah. that he has, Keely, that you may not have, right? There's something in him that suddenly the light has turned on and he sees a way out and it is like he's not stopping. Uh, so what I would want you guys to do is to be in agreement that you may, Keely, for a hot second, just smile and nod <laughs> as he talks about the debt all the time and the budget all the time. And you just say, OK, OK. But but your life choices and how your family's set up, you guys need to be in agreement on because it is not fair for you to say, Yes, the school, you know, the kids, I have to make lunches for school and here's the budget for the groceries. It's like, nope, got to spend only $20 this month. And you're like, no, no, like literally that's not realistic. So like he has to have reality. You are going to, you know, a part of me is like, I don't know, good for him. You know, and and, and I'll tell you, I am somebody who gets overly zealous about a thing. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, here's how my wife has kept us married (laughs) without her going bananas, is when I get overzealous about a thing, she will sit down and she'll say, hey, every conversation is becoming about X, Y, or Z. You get one or you get three. And okay. it's kind of, it's a joke and she's never held me to it. And if you know her, she's funny like this, but she'll say, you get one, John. Right. I'm going to listen to one new thing about some new weird nutrition hack. I'm going to listen to one thing about some new 
doctor. Cold yeah, cold. Like one more thing about ice baths. One, you get one a day, right? <laughs> and so yes. here's what I would love to see. How, how long have y'all been just, how long has he just been um, Tasmanian devil about this? Since December. <laughs> okay. So here's what I would love you to do. I would love you to take, um, set up and say, honey, I want to take you on a, on a uh, walking date because we're not going to spend any money, but we're going to go to a park <laughs> or something like that. Or we're going we're gonna to go get coffee and look at him and say, we're spending $9 on coffee. And here's mm-hmm. what I want you to do. I want you to take a spreadsheet or a plan or your budget or whatever it is and tell him, I'm so proud of you for being a part of this change. But I also feel like I'm losing my husband. I need my husband back. Okay. And yeah. if you can communicate to him in whatever language y'all use, not an accusatory, but in the same way he feels panicky and shameful about the hole he quote unquote dug for his family that he's so insane to get out of, I want you to communicate that same fear that you're losing your husband. And we're going to make a plan. We're going to make a budget. We're going to stick to it. We're going to use the Every Dollar app. Do y'all have Every Dollar? We do not yet. Okay. It's going to be my gift to you. I'm going to give you the premium version for a year. Okay? Thank you. All right. So y'all going to use that together. But that way he doesn't have to check the banking accounts 24-7, 365. Any expenses will just pop up on the app. Okay. And y'all will be in partnership together. And you can tell him with a smile on your face, you get one. We'll talk about the debt snowball or money with it once a day. Okay. Okay. But we have to learn to live in a rhythm now. And we have a map here. And the map says it's going to take us 23 months to pay this off. Talking about it a whole bunch every day does not accelerate that 23 months. Maybe you get in a second job or a third job. Maybe that will. But or if there's a if there's a raise at work and a bonus, we I we shake your hand that that's going to the debt. Yeah, like we, we dump yes. it all on. We just did that. Both of us oh. just took that step. Awesome. Look but, at that. but the kids still get to play soccer this summer, and the kids still get to go to Thank church you. camp, etc. Okay, <laughs> just build it into the budget. Okay. Perfect. Yes. All Thank right. you. Hey, Thanks, he's lucky Keely. to have you. He's lucky to have you. I know. We'll be right back. Thank you. Hey guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive, and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y-Refi. Y-Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225, taking your calls on money, life, work, all of it. Let's go out to Austin, Texas, to the 512 and talk to Jacob. Hey, Jacob, what's up? Hey, guys, how are you all today? Fantastic. Brother, what's up? Well, I've got a few questions for you and uh, hoping you could provide some clarity here. Um, I've go got a it. few uh, brokerage accounts, uh, one of which being a crypto account, um, totaling to about fifty thousand um, dollars. The question is, should I allocate that towards a forty-eight thousand dollar vehicle loan, as well as chip away at two hundred thousand dollars in uh, student loans? Woo, two hundred thousand. What was your degree in? Yes, uh, that was my wife's anesthesia degree. Is the is the vast majority of oh, that? Okay, okay. 
And yeah, how, I'm not going to tell you to go right get, get a get get student loans, but that's not that's pretty good. <laughs> like, what is she making? What is she making a year? Uh, she makes two oh nine, and I make about a hundred, so okay. we're just awesome. shy of three ten. Perfect. Annual. Okay. Well, that's the good. That's the good news of all of this. What kind of car is make? this? Uh, it is a Chevy Tahoe. Okay. Awesome. And is that the debt? Just that and student loans. Student loans. Uh, in addition, would be a mortgage. Okay. We purchased a home in October. Okay. How much do you guys owe on that? Uh, three twenty. Okay. Um. Yes, so I would. When you cash that out, there may be some taxes implications there, but right. um, but the rest, yeah, I would throw pay that off exactly, and then I would just yeah lower lifestyle, and okay. yeah get this two hundred the student loans knocked out. I mean, if you guys could live on a hundred thousand, this could be gone in twelve months. Yeah, sure. Uh, and we've been we have another vehicle as well that we actually just paid off uh, yesterday. Oh, good. good. Thing, Congrats. Uh, Congrats. That's you. awesome. Can Thank I tell you. you, if it was me, I'd probably sell the Tahoe. What does the Tahoe I, It's a It's an amazing car. I love them. Um, it's been one of my dream cars for a long time. Does it have any sentimental value, or could you get rid of it? And and I, I know you're going to roll your eyes, but could you just like Camry this thing for a minute and get all this stuff out of, get all this debt cleaned up? Uh, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, we purchased it about three months ago. Oh, okay. Um, if, so what's it, it worth now? Our family Do you know? has grown. Uh, probably, I would have to assume roughly the same. Uh, we don't drive terribly, uh, you know, much. Um, so I would, I would assume, you know, fifty or so. Um, so how, we're um, how, how how big's your family? Uh, we just had our second daughter okay. uh, a few months ago. So my parents raised all three of us in a Camry. Hash, hashtag just saying. But all, <laughs> all, this, all I know the world's different now. But. Um, I'm so proud of you guys. Y'all make killer money and y'all didn't go bananas with your house. And that tells me that y'all are really wise. And so, man, that wisdom, if you take that wisdom and just say, I know that we, we make $300,000, but if we live, like we just make a hundred, mm-hmm. we can change the entire trajectory of our family. Think about just having that. And you make 300 grand, you have no payments except for your mortgage. You can knock your mortgage out real quick. And you're talking about y'all are going to be stupid wealthy. You know, you see what I'm saying? Sure. Y'all okay. could get out in front of this thing really quick yeah. with just a year of, of, of hard sacrifice. And by yeah. the way, not hard okay. sacrifice. You know what I mean? But, um, sure. But living well below your means, y'all could really turn the tide on this sucker. Okay. Okay. So just so I'm clear, you would advise to sell everything in crypto uh, as well as any brokerage accounts. There's also a a $10,000 Roth IRA that... uh, Don't touch that. Yeah, leave that one. Yeah, leave that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anything that's, we also have, that doesn't have the penalty. That doesn't have like if a retirement If it's a retirement penalty. account, leave it alone. Yeah, but I, if I'm in my house, if I had $50,000 in a brokerage account with crypto in it, I would, that would be gone before the day's over. Okay. And John would uh, sell the car. I would sell the I, car. I honestly am on the fence with it. I'll, I'll just be a little bit. Yeah, you, on that, it, it's no. not, it's not, has nothing to do with your, with like the, your with the salary to car it, income yeah. ratio. It's just getting out of debt as quick as possible. I, I, I would be more haunted by the debt than I would be by a, yeah. a smaller car. Yep. Sure. And then would you still advise uh, maintaining, if I'm not mistaken, baby step two of a thousand dollar emergency fund? Uh, right now we have five thousand dollars in that savings account. So would we whittle that down another four to get to the one. Yes. Yep. And just throw that anything extra you guys have at that two hundred. And let that dude. I, I know it will haunt you. It'll drive you. <laughs> it'll drive you crazy. Let that be the gas. Um, that dumps on the fire that y'all just say, honey, can we do this in one, one calendar year? Okay. Can we just be bananas okay. for one calendar year? Oh, I'm willing to drive a Camry or a Corolla, not a Corolla. That's probably too small for everybody, but I, I'll drive, I'll sell the Tahoe. If we can just knock this thing out and let's put all the money towards this. Can we take extra shifts? Can we, whatever, whatever it's going to take, let's just do this real quick. Yeah. And then realistically, Jacob, if that's the route you guys take, you'll take that 4,000 and put it towards a, towards another car, right? Like, because you'll be selling the Tahoe. Sure. If you sell the Tahoe, um, then oh yeah, but then you have the fifty thousand the, in the brokerage account yeah, that you can take account. some. Yeah, take some out of that too. Okay. And then I also have another you know paid for vehicle, so I don't know if that would you know have any merit in this conversation. Well, you have a, um, so you have a third car or just two? No, sir. The just one you just paid off. Paid yeah, for. that's fine. I would just keep it. Yeah, keep that car. Yeah. yeah. Unless it, unless it's, it's a seventy five thousand dollar car, and you think, well, man, we could 
sell it, buy two Camrys, and take that fifty grand. And now we're we're dealing with one hundred fifty grand in student loans instead of mm -hmm. two uh, hundred thousand. No, it's just a it's a Silverado. It's a, you know thirty five forty thousand dollar vehicle. Yeah, you got to keep your truck, dude. Oh my god! Don't yeah, go yeah, don't go too far. Jeez. Jeez. Know, He's a Texas male. These it's men. part of it's part of the <laughs> these men. It's in our DNA. It's in our DNA. You know. Oh man. Yeah, I, I don't want to be totally unreasonable, Jacob. <laughs> Sell her Tahoe. You sure. keep your truck. Oh my dude. gosh. Of course, yeah. She's an Uber worst case scenario. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm off this call. I'll hang out with your wife. Yeah, Jacob. Rachel. No, Rachel, she's not I'm buying kidding. any of this. Um, no, quite honestly, I'm going to be a martyr on this one. Um, I would keep my wife's Tahoe and I'd sell my truck and, um, but whatever, whatever y'all decide to do, you don't have to sell either of the vehicles. It's just going to accelerate everything. Just think of it this way. The faster you get out of debt, the faster y'all can go about, start going to restaurants again. You can get that emergency fund built up where you can breathe, where she can breathe, where you don't have to worry about kids falling down and needing stitches, which they're going to need. Um, sure. All that stuff, you, you just begin to build peace into your home and you can start building peace after you quit running for your life. And y'all are just running for your life right now because you got 250 grand um, clawing at you. 200, uh, like a... a, a a car company and a student loan company are telling you two what y'all are going to do with your lives tomorrow. Right. Yeah, I feel like somebody else's asset. That's exactly right. You are working for them right now, making them wealthy. And y'all have worked too hard. Y'all are too smart. You're too accomplished to let somebody else get wealthy off of your hard work. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Um, and uh, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, man. I'm proud of you, man. Congratulations. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah, it's hey. funny doing the show with... Uh, different personalities because you get different levels of like oh yeah, yeah what yeah. you'll do like what yeah. george will do what jade would do but like it uh it is so great so yeah back to that though not to confuse anyone it is when we talk about cars if you can pay it off in 18 months and or it's less than in cars in total is less than half of your annual income then you know that's all good but to john's point when you're in this and it's just about making them, choices. Yeah. It's $250,000 staring at you. And when you can take some of that and say, oh my gosh, this percentage could leave right now, this percent, this, this by these radical choices of selling cars, doing stuff. That's where you see progress. It really is. Yeah. And, and again, I'm so haunted. I, it, I, you've been around me when I'm, when I'm not well, when I'm kind of <laughs> just out of my mind, I hate owing people money. Yeah. And so if I sit down and my wife and I, like put it all on paper and in 12 months, if we live radical, we could do this. It almost baby step two is it again for me. Yeah. Like I'm going to burn a hole through my mortgage. I'm going to burn all this stuff out. Yep. And so if it, if man, if it is a matter of me driving a Tahoe or a Camry and we're, we don't owe anybody anything in 12 debt, months. Yes. 12, yes. Shoot, that car is going, it's, it's gone. Yeah, right? totally. It's, it's out of here. Totally. If it's going to be two years, three years, Tahoe's yes, a sweet ride. It's that's a sweet fair. ride. That's fair. Cool. All right. Hey, this is The Ramsey Show, 888-825-5225. We'll be right back. Back, 888-825-5225. I'm John Deloney, joined by Rachel Cruz, taking your calls on life and money, everything you got going on. Hey, listen, if you're like me, you see the Congress spending, you see the political infighting, you see f like your neighbors are like, hey, I got this new car. And you know, like, there's no way you can afford that. It's just frustrating because you're watching the whole thing go down and you love this thing this country, your neighbors, your friends, your community, and you just wish everybody had this information. You don't have to buy anything. 
It helps your neighbors. It helps your friends. It helps people you've never met by simply leaving a five-star review, by subscribing to the show, by thumbs upping it or whatever the device you're doing says, how, how do we know that you like this thing? Um, sending an episode um, or a particular call to somebody that you know needs this call. The more you pass it around, the more it kicks it up into the algorithms and puts it in your neighbor's feed. And that's how the show grows organically. Word of mouth, church by church, person by person, neighbor by neighbor. And we're getting the message out that, hey, we're unplugging from the matrix. We're done letting other people get rich off our backs. We're taking back our autonomy. We're not going to owe anybody any money. And that way we can do kind of what we want. And so please hit the subscribe button. We're super grateful for you. Send episodes to your friends. It doesn't cost anything. And you can really change the country from the inside out. Let's go out to Charles right down the street in Franklin, Tennessee. What's up, Chuck? Hi, guys. I have a life insurance question. Bring it, man. All right. I'm 60, and my wife is 50, and we have two adult children. We have 800000 on my life and 250000 on my wife's life, and they're both in term policies that cost us about $530 a month. I'm wondering if we need that much life insurance now that our children are grown up and our net worth is about $2 million, but that includes our primary residence and we have no debt. How much do you guys have in just cash or retirement, uh, or, or, or retirement accounts, actual money, not assets uh, in a house? Um, in retirement accounts and 401k combined, we have $560,000. Amazing. Well done. Yeah. So, so there gets to a point, yes, Charles, where you do become self-insured. And so it really is running out the math for you guys to say, if something were to happen to you or to her, and that income is not coming in, where does that leave us? So for you, how much do you make a year? I make 125,000 a year. She makes 78. And she makes 78. Okay. Yeah. And she's 50. Is that right? Yes, she's 50. Okay. So, yes, I mean, I, I would for you guys, I mean, you're in a really great spot. I mean, almost to that point. And so I would just run out those numbers for you guys. I would sit down and say, okay, if something happened to her, would you be okay on 120 for however much longer you want to work or you need to work in order to be fine, which you're going to be. You have a paid for house and five hundred and sixty thousand dollars in retirement, right? So and think about this, that, you're going to be fine. That 560 every seven years will double. Right. That's right. And yeah, so I'm not you're planning to retire until I'm 70 as well. Okay. okay so at 67, so that's that's 1.1. 1. 1. Right. Right. And what 74? It's 2.2, 2. and that's just in your. I mean, you'll be withdrawing from that, obviously. But um, how, how much longer are you insured under your policy? You got to be getting close to the end there, right? Yeah, another 11 years on my policy. Okay, that's that's a little bit longer than I thought. So you bought that you bought that sucker early, huh? Yeah, I did. I, I've always been kind of afraid of dying, and I did have a heart attack a year and a half ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I set these things up when my children were young. and Yeah. So, so let me ask yeah. you another weird question. Um, sure. I, I call it peace of mind tax. I pay for certain things in my life simply because it helps me sleep at night. Right. And I don't mind paying 5 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month on several different things because it helps me sleep. Right. Um, can you afford this, this payment? Yeah, we can. We're, um, we're maximizing our retirement accounts, you know, with money left over so we can still afford this if we want to keep doing it. That's my question for you is if you just had a health scare, you have this yes. thing, um, and you have no payments, y'all are making upwards of $200,000 a year. If it's me, right. I'm just speaking honest truth here. Forget the math. The fact that I know that my wife would get uh, almost a million dollars um, if right. I were to go and I got real close to the edge just a year and a half ago, I I'd pay that money. I'd pay that money every month until they quit letting me do it. Okay. That, But that, again, that's not a math problem. That is mm -hmm. a, I want to sleep knowing that that woman that I've dedicated my life to is going to be able to do nothing if she doesn't want to. She's going to be able to do whatever she wants and or needs to do in the event that I go. Right. So yep. that's not a math yeah. problem, yeah. but that's just me. That's right. And and I yeah. and I'll say it too because again, we can go to the math side, Charles. And I think you guys, you guys will be fine. I think you'll run out the numbers and realize we'll we'll be good. But Winston and I, we could be self insured 
and it's exactly what you're saying, John. And we still have we still have life insurance. We yeah. have term life because I'm like we're young, and we're healthy. It's inexpensive, and and we use Xander Insurance. They always we always get a great rate, and it's like why not? Why would we not? Yeah. And so that's yeah. So if we're speaking truthfully, that's what I'm doing that's in what real I'm doing life. In my house, yeah. Uh, but again, mathematically, Charles, if you both are really secure and you're like, Mal, we don't really have that. We're fine. If something happened and that income went away, we're gonna be okay. Because the truth is, you will be. You will be. You have a paid for house. You got plenty in retirement. You will be fine. But it's just that peace of mind. And maybe it's vice versa. Maybe you cancel hers. And keep yours because maybe she's like, nope, Charles, I want, still want some money in case right. something happens to you. Or maybe you say, yeah, just in case something happens to her, I'll, I don't know. Like it, it may be one or the other even. You drop one, keep one, drop both, you're fine, keep both. So yeah, it's a, it's a peace of mind play at that point because you are at this point self-insured. And here, like along that same line, Rachel, just to put this out in the world and, and um, Charles, I'm going to use your situation to, to just have a broader conversation. My household can only run. I can only do what I do. Be on the radio all day. I do my show. I do media in between. I do this show and then get on the road and travel and speak and then write books out of hotels in the middle of the night and early morning. I can only do that because my wife is incredible doing all these other tasks. That make th- so we are absolutely intertwined as a, as a gang. We're a team. And so mm-hmm. if something was to happen to her, on paper, it looks like, well, all the money's coming from, or most of the money's coming from here. I would have to have some additional, I'd have to hire people to backfill the role she plays. Right. Does that make sense? Forget the yep. connection part, like just the mm-hmm. day-to-day, like she runs everything. She's amazing. So she's the CEO of the of the whole property, of the whole place. So all I have to say is, um, like Rachel said, y'all fit factor in. What would it cost to replace just the duties, right? Someone to take care of X and Y and Z. I don't know how y'all have it broken up in your home, but th- that looks different for every family. But just the reality is my salary is only possible because of the work that my wife mm-hmm. does, right? That's a great point. Because we yep. work together on this yep. deal. So it's and easy I'm, to just look at the dollar amount, but it's all it's often a bigger ecosystem. That's right. Totally. Yeah. And and Charles, I'm, I'm so glad you called even for this question because you're a great example, Charles. <laughs> For people watching or listening, because sometimes, John, and more than not, more than not, when we talk to people about life insurance, it's on the other end of this. It's a young family with little kids and a husband dies in a car wreck and there's no life insurance. And it's just it is it's compounding the worst stress that you could ever, ever imagine. And so I, I, all I, of you out there, you need life insurance. If someone is dependent upon your income, you need life insurance. And so term life exactly what charles is saying it is it's inexpensive you guys obviously the younger and healthier you are the the less expensive it is but go to xander shop some rates and it it is a gift it is a gift to give your family when people don't have life insurance and something happens it 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 magnifies i mean it it doubles down everything you all those adjectives onto a situation where you just can't breathe i've been to both sides and i think i've told you privately there's a particular hollow look in the eyes of a wife whose husband has just died. And she says, I got to go to work on Monday. Like, I, I, I know we don't have anything or the other scary is she looks and goes, I don't, I don't know where anything is. Mm-hmm. And I had a friend whose husband passed away and he left a significant amount of money on a life insurance policy. And she got to go to counseling yep. and got to grieve and got to be with the kids wherever they needed to be. What a different trajectory. Right? Absolutely. So get Absolutely. life insurance. Get it, get it, get it. It's another hour in the books here on The Ramsey Show. We will see you soon. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people with their money, their work, and their relationships. I'm John Deloney, joined by my great friend, Rachel Cruz, and we're taking your calls on just about everything. 888-825-5225. 
888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Let's go out to Charlotte, North Carolina, and talk to Hannah. What's up, Hannah? How, where are you here? Uh, right there. What's up, Hannah? Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. Thanks for calling. What's up? Um, yeah, my question is about our house and whether it's okay to sell it or if we should sell it. Um, it's a little bit of a complex situation. Uh, we bought the house two and a half years ago, and it's a 1940s home that needs a lot more work than what we had anticipated. So it's going to take us longer to update it than what we had anticipated. But um, along with that, we have a lot of really great neighbors, but we also have one really awful neighbor that um, is really making me want to move. Um, but I, we want to make a good financial decision and not just an emotional decision. Okay. But sometimes emotional decisions aren't bad. <laughs> Are you unsafe in your home? Um, I don't know. So I, I think we're okay, but... Um, I can hear in your voice. Tell, tell me what makes you think you're, you, you might not be safe. It's with a neighbor? Mm-hmm. The neighbor yeah. that you're talking what, What's uh, going on? Yeah, they're just really, um, they're hostile and aggressive and a little bit unpredictable in how they behave towards us, particularly around one situation where um, they really want to control where we park or our delivery drivers park or anybody who comes to our house parks on the public street between our homes, um, so much so that they've called the police on us twice for parking where they don't want us to park. Um, what do the police say? They, um, the police, the first time they went, he came over and talked to us after talking to them and said, hey, you're not doing anything wrong. Um, they just, just make sure that you're being neighborly, which we have been um, up until about today when I ignored the neighbor because um, he comes outside and is very chipper and is like, hi, how are you? But after having a run-in with them this weekend over parking during our garage sale, um, I, anyways, um, they so, just well, they feel very unpredictable. Here's the deal. I want, um, when I turn onto my street to head up my driveway, I want my heart rate to start to go down. Mm-hmm. And that means my marriage has to be healthy. That means my relationship with my kids has to be healthy. That means I have to have mowed the yard when I said I was going to, taken the trash out, like all the stuff. That also means I have to be at peace with my neighbors. Yeah. And so that's a part of the homeowner experience. <laughs> now, if you say, hey, there's no chance that we can sit down at, at, at a table and say, hey, we're neighbors, like – like, can we talk this out? If that's not possible, it's not possible, then have a hard conversation. But I wouldn't go into debt. I wouldn't do anything stupid with my money. But if I'm tired of coming home to an unpeaceful neighborhood or an unpeaceful home, yeah, I might consider moving. Yeah. Okay. So the home, Hannah, what's the the money situation? What? How much do you guys, what equity do you have in it? Do you have money saved? Where Where would you go? I mean, what's what's the numbers around yeah. that? I think that's part of the tension of it. Um, I think we would have to rent. So I think the home is worth between five fifty and six hundred. Um, our mortgage is about four twenty on it. We do have a little bit of well, not a little bit. We are on baby step two, um, and we have a ninety thousand dollars HELOC, and then a little bit of um, credit card debt for our business. Um, How long so have you been married? Of, uh, almost 15 years. Okay. What's your husband say about about the neighbors? Um, he's overly optimistic. <laughs> um, there's been a couple of things, like he wants me to still be friendly with them. Um, today when I told him, I just waved just out of kind of politeness that wasn't real friendly with him. His first reaction was awe, like, and it was disappointed, but I, I told him, I just think that they're manipulating us, and um, and I don't even want to talk to them anymore. Yeah, because that's of the a way fair that boundary to draw. Us. It's a fair boundary, uh-huh. and also I'm not going to give up my dignity for somebody else. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm uh, not going to give you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's where I'm having a really hard time because when I had an interaction with her this weekend, 
um, I was physically shaking because I didn't know how far she would escalate. Um, so it's just, um, I don't want to live near them, but it's, it's like to have to move for just that reason alone. And so, um, and it's not just that reason. I, I mean, I dream of something different. But, um, yeah, if, if this is the case, if you were my wife and you came to me with this challenge, I would sell the house this weekend and we would mm-hmm. rent for a while. Cause Hey, here's the deal. This transition is going to come at a cost, some shape, form or fashion. And, yeah. um, can I use you as an example, not to kick you while you're down, but just to kind of paint a picture. <laughs> sure. Um, this is one of those exact reasons why we tell people don't take out a HELOC hmm. because you never know when you're going to have a neighbor that wants to burn your house down. Right. And it's like, you know what, I'm going to, that's why we tell people to do things at the speed of cash and yada, yada, yada. We sound like a broken record, but what we're doing is we're Mm -hmm. giving people margin in case Mm -hmm. something happens, which something does happen. Um, And so, but if you sit down with your husband and say, I don't feel safe here anymore, either he's going to go next door and say, Hey, can we just talk about this like adults Uh, and come to some sort of understanding here? My wife's scared. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all hate us as neighbors. Can we just solve this? Or, all right, we're going to put the house on the market and we're going to go. And we're going to rent for a couple of years. We're going to save some money up. We thought we were going to do the cool old house with lots of quirks, but we're going to fix it up. And that, we're not those people. Yeah, because is there more to be done, Hannah, more than this 90000 HELOC? Would you guys have to put more money into the house? Oh, yeah. There's yeah, so it's, I mean, like, so it kind of feels like a lose-lose, bad purchase, bad neighbor situation, right? Yeah. Um, do you guys, so you guys have some credit card debt. Do you have any money saved? Um, just the thousand dollar emergency fund. Okay. So if you sold this house, you could use equity and clean up everything, look at each other and go, we are not those people. We're not HGTV people. We thought we were, but we're not. So cool. We're (laughs) going to rent for two years, save up some money. You'll walk around with around 50,000 in equity. Mm -hmm. Um, that'll go down some with realtor stuff and, you know fees and commissions, but you'll walk away with some and yeah. And I think you guys um, rent for a while and there may be a, it may be a start over process for you, you know? Um, but again, the, the peace of mind is really big, Hannah. And it, I mean, you were like shaking, talking to us and I, it may, I don't know if it was cause you're nervous because it's me and John or the situation brings so much emotion, but I heard it in your voice. And so there is a peace of mind there. And the fact that this is a money pit of a house, it just wasn't a wise purchase, right? So yeah, looking at other options, it might be the case and knowing that you'll be renting for a bit, but if that brings peace of mind, that brings peace of mind. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, we'll be right back. This is The Ramsey Show. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, check this out! A brand new event. Dave Ramsey's uh, Investing Essentials. At this event, Dave is going to deep dive into investing, and for the first time ever, he's sharing his personal playbook on investing, including how he buys real estate. This is not just the broad principles. He is I kind of bummed out, Rachel, because this is what I thought the cool part of working on the show was, is we hang out with Dave and I'm like, hey, would you buy this? And he's like, no, and here's why. Or yeah, I totally wouldn't. Here's why. <laughs> yeah. I thought I kind of had an inside track. And now he's like, ah, it's going to tell America. Just so, tell everyone. So here it is, a two-night virtual event happening May 21st and 22nd. I can't do two nights. Yes, you can. You watch the World Series. You can, you can do two nights. It's a two-night virtual event to change your 
investing future. May 21st and 22nd, and you can watch it from the comfort of your home. It's all online. Investing is something you've been asking us to dig deeper into, so here you go. You're going to talk about the basics, then we're going to deep dive into specific things, mutual funds, types of mutual funds, real estate, why Dave doesn't do other things. And by the way, this isn't just theory and principle. This is what Dave does with his family's money with his personal wealth. You're going to learn how to maximize your 401k mutual funds, his personal strategy, Dave's, and which investing trends to follow and which ones to run screaming from. Tickets are $199. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. Let's go out to Indianapolis and talk to Allie. Hey, Allie, what's up? Hi, guys. How are you doing? We're partying. What are you up to? Oh, just waiting on the line to talk to you guys. So I just have a quick question for you. All right, bring it. My husband and I, we have about $38,000 left on our debt snowball. And recently, last week, we had a hailstorm at our house, and our cars are considered a total loss by the insurance. It's all co- cosmetic damage, though. Um, and insurance is going to give us a check for about $10,600. Nice. And so we were wondering if we should put this money on or debt snowball. Wait, they totaled both cars and all you get is 10,000 bucks? <laughs> yes, but we drive 2011, you know. Oh, Not Allie, I would high five you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is all cosmetic. Like, you're, it's running fine. Yes, they run fine. Yeah, I'm it's throwing it at the debt. I would. I yeah. mean, they're old cars. Right. You know what's funny, Allie? Right. There was a, uh, my husband's from Knoxville and there was a terrible hailstorm in Knoxville. Like, it's probably, I don't know, this was years ago. And we came in for a weekend and every car that was driving down the road had hail. Da- I mean, like literally almost every yeah. car had hail damage. And we were laughing. We're like, people just, they, they just cashed in. Like, well, they're, in they're in like, West Texas, where I'm from, there's one every month. There's a, a wild, it's, that's just, you live there and your car is going to be dinged. all yes. dinged yes. up. So and, y'all won't be pe- the only ones. People treated it like a tax refund. Like, we got money. And I was like, <laughs> no, right. it's not like a gift. But but yeah, hey, I, I would, Allie. Yeah. If it was a okay. 2022 Lexus, I might, I might go get it fixed. But your cars are depreciated all the way out to the very bottom anyway. And so, yeah, get out of debt. Okay, yeah, that's that's what we thought. So I, we just wanted to check with you guys, though. So, yep. awesome. Yeah, good on you. Well done. <laughs> thanks, Congra- thanks. Congratulations thanks, from the hail gods, right? <laughs> all right, let's go out to Philadelphia and talk to M-A-T-T. What's up, Matt? Hey, John and Rachel. How are you doing? We're doing fantastic, man. What's up? Awesome. Um, so I have a question. This is also vehicle related. Um, I had a, a truck that I've owned for about 12 years, uh, 2000 Toyota Tundra, and I had gotten a newer truck and was looking to get rid of that truck. And my 16 year old son was interested. So I told him, Hey, it'd be awesome if you get dad's truck. He didn't have the money to pay for it all, obviously up front, but, um, I told him, you can make payments to me as you can. He had a side job while he's in school and um, he's been paying, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month for a little while. Uh, anyway, he's paid probably $1,400 and yesterday uh, he totaled the truck. Oh, um, no. Uh, oh, gross. <laughs> he is he is perfectly fine, Good. thank God. Um, but the truck is, is done for and I only carry liability insurance on it. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a you know a loss straight up loss. And my my question is, as a dad, what what should I do to to help him to learn a lesson in in responsibility and reality, and yet not overburden him financially? How old um, is he? I can absorb this loss, but um, he's sixteen. Is there anything I should do? Yeah, he's sixteen years old. Oh, All right, God. Rachel. I want you to just, dis- Rachel. I want you to disagree with me, but I'm going to give you my from my Ooh, gut answer. I'm, I'm, I don't okay? know. I know they're just so young. And Matt, still at I, my son is um, f- uh, 14, so I'm right there with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I would take my son out for lunch, just uh-huh. us two, and say we're going to talk about the truck. Uh-huh. And I would tell my son, if I had done what you did, son, I screwed up. I put you in a position to borrow money on a vehicle mm-hmm. and I never should have put you in that position. And that's on me as your dad. Yep. You've lost this truck. I, I put a an object 
I put debt between our relationship and that will never happen again. And I'm the old man here. That's I'm the dad that's on me. <laughs> yep. Now you are out of a truck. You're going to have to earn your money back. And if, if you, like you say, if you're in a financial position, the deal I've made with Mike, Mike, both of my kids is I'll do half. You save up and earn it. I'll, I'll, I'll double whatever you got. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And so maybe you make him a Mm -hmm. deal like that or whatever you can do. But he's got to have some skin in the game because he wrecked it. Yeah. But I think the the relationship stuff, the healing there, it's got to come from you. The debt part, you got to say, dude, I did this to us, to us. Mm -hmm. I did this. I should have. I should have. I should even give you this truck or whatever. But here, here we are. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to do is his shoulders are going to. He's going to say, I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry. And you say, no, no, no. It's not your job to make me feel better. I'm the dad. I did this. I'm glad you're okay. The thought of losing you just kills me. And yeah. take this lesson. You and I are never going to borrow money again. That's what I would do if it was my kid. Mm-hmm. And there's I probably thousands of people listening, millions of people going, oh, that guy's weak. You should crush it. I, I, I think you put him in a position where he's, he's going to borrow money from his dad. Yes, yeah. he's yeah. 16. Yeah. Um, yeah. How much did he give you, Matt, in payments? Uh, so far, fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen hundred. Okay. And was the was the wreck his fault? What was the situation? <laughs> yeah, it, it was. It was a one vehicle accident, um, and he he was driving on a gravel road and lost control. Okay. Was he like on his phone? Fu- well, you, I don't even know if you want to go into all of that because. I- <laughs> well, that's another. Yeah. But- was he on his phone? Was he texting and driving? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think he was being just, yeah. extremely irresponsible. Because I'll tell you this, maybe Matt. A, maybe Rachel, little. at 15, <laughs> and I had my own car at that point because I had saved up and paid cash. I paid half of it. We did that. We did mm-hmm. the 401 Dave thing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I got in a wreck outside of my high school with a permit. So my mom's in the passenger seat. And it ends up being oh, a five-car car, five car pileup. The last car yeah. was some guy who, I mean, it was probably a $1,000 car. It ended up catching on fire. The engine <laughs> caught on fire, and they had to call the fire department. Can I just say, at 15, I, my, the, the lesson was learned. Like, it was yeah. learned. I was so, it, it was horrible. It was horrible, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I learned. And now right. I don't get close to cars that are stopping at stop. Like, I'm like, I'm very aware of the distance. So all that to say, does he need to yeah. quote unquote learn his lesson? I bet he's learned his lesson at 16. Yeah. Like, that sucks. Well, you know, yeah. you, you total yeah. a car, like, he knows, he knows. And I just, I don't know. And then there's For a sure. part of me, again, I just think about my, my son, <laughs> such a mom with a, with a son. I almost would say that 1400 is a credit to the future car. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I probably because wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Payments to you. I wouldn't do that. I'm not. I'm not quite as soft as Rachel, but I. I don't know. Because I just. I don't know. Because he's gonna have to work hard. It's gonna take him a while to save up money at this point mm-hmm. to pay yeah. for another car or half of a car, or however you choose to do it, Matt. Um, but here's what's here's what's not broken. The, the your finances aren't broken. What's what's in flux right now is your relationship. Let's fix that. Let's let him know it was on I me. I love that. It was though, on Matt. me. It will never happen yes. again. You and me are making a pledge from this point forward. We're never borrowing money again. And that puts weight on the subject of debt heavier than ever He'll before. If my dad it. is telling me I did this and I will never, and you're like, oh, it is a bad thing, right? Like you're you're learning that lesson in real time too. Good on you, Matt. He's lucky to have you as an old man. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm John Deloney, joined by Rachel Cruz. And we have somebody cool on the debt-free stage. We have Josh. What's up, man? Good to, good to be here. Thank you. Where are you here from? I'm Greenville, South Carolina in the upstate. Greenville, South Carolina. Yes, and I'm assuming since you're on the stage, you've paid off everything. Talk us through it. How much have you paid off? I paid off $96,000 in three years and five months. Wow. Nice. 96k three years and five months making what kind of income from 62 to about 70 or so with a bunch of side hustles in there so okay that's the base roughly amazing so great all right so tell us uh, how did you get connected with this 
wild crew of people. Well, about five or six years ago, I was approaching halfway in my career and really wanted to prepare myself for retirement. Um, so I'm a planner, like way ahead planner. And I put my, my um, spreadsheets together and calculators and everything and realized I was in pretty good shape. But I looked over and I had a truck and a mortgage that I really didn't want to have in retirement. So um, I so you started, paid off your house. Your house. house. Oh, yes, that's I did. That's the yeah. house. Oh, way to go, dude. Congratulations. Was, yeah, 3,000 of it was a truck and 96, or 93 was the house. Oh, my gosh. What was left in the house anyway. So you're done I completely. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. But, Unbelievable. Yeah, but I was, I was wanting to pay everything off. And so I looked at the math because I just like the math part. And I paid extra on the mortgage because that had a higher, interest, higher interest rate than the truck was. Did that for a couple of years. And... It was okay, but then 2020 happened. Um, we got sent home, so I found a podcast and found y'all's, and y'all said pay off everything except the house first. So I looked at it and realized that if I really went after it, I could pay off the truck and pretty quick. Mm-hmm. So about four months into it, I paid the truck off. It was wow. just quick, and then which felt really good. So I said I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do the house also. So I put money to retirement. I still, I still did that. But I kept paying extra and extra and more and more and more side hustles to get the house paid off. And I originally have it paid off in January of 2025. But the more I kept paying on it, the more side hustles I picked up. Um, I kept pushing that, that payoff date up a little bit. Ended up paying it off in September of last year, actually. Oh, my gosh. So, like... Oh, a year and a half or, I mean, close to a year, year and a half. To, more, almost a, uh, more than a year of your life. Right. Unbelievable. Wow. That's incredible. So, what kind of side hustles did you do? Actually, I had to write that down because I had so many. Um, um, well, I'm a teacher by trade, so I, most of it was through that. But I tutored after school. I still do that nowadays. Um, what got me the most money is I, I sell um, tickets to sporting events at school after school. Oh, yeah. So I do that once or twice a week, get paid anywhere from 30 to 100 bucks a night, depending on how, how many games there were. Oh a couple times a week, that's, that adds up real fast. A teacher paid um, off his house. Yeah. Debt-free completely. And hey, let's not, I used to do that. I used to teach all day. And then I would go work a volleyball game or sell tickets. Whatever. Oh, yeah. It's miserable when you get there at 6 a.m. <laughs> you don't go home till 10.30 p.m. Yeah. night after night after night, that, right? That happened quite a few times. And those same kids are like, oh, my gosh, Mr. Josh, why are you? <laughs> yeah. and, you got, and their parent, and you kept doing it, and you kept doing it, and you kept doing it. What a sacrifice, well, man. I, I got to know a lot of the parents because I saw them every, like, every night anyway for the game. So it yeah. was, they said, you're here again. I said, okay, I, so how I much am. is your house worth? Uh, two eighty right now. I okay, and how much do you have in retirement? About three fifty. Oh my gosh, on your way, mm-hmm. easily yeah. to be a millionaire. All right, so what? It's what incredible. are some of these other jobs? Because because everyone tells us we can't do it. Yeah. You can't you can't do this anymore in modern day uh, the USA. Uh, let's see. I did. I grade AP chemistry exams. I do that every summer. Oh, that's the um, worst. Do you go out on the beach to do it though? Well, it was in Salt Lake City the past few years. Okay. This year's in Tampa. So, yeah, there's... There you go. Yeah, right. I'll do that. Okay. Um, I did summer school last year for the first time ever. And my favorite thing, though, is my district owns a planetarium and part of a science center. And out of the blue, a couple of years ago, the planetarium director called me up and said, I see you teach astronomy. Do you want to do our... I'll do a public program once a month, like one Friday night a month for you know, the public? And I said, I would love to. So I get paid the least for that because it's once a month, but I'll, that's more more fun than anything else I do that. So good. You're an astronomy professor? Okay, I'm a chemistry and astronomy teacher, not a professor. A yeah. teacher. All right, hey, we're going to pause this debt-free scream real quick. Rachel and I have an ongoing. Stop, stop. No, Did we no, land no. on the moon or not? Oh Absolutely we did. I knew it. I knew it. Solved. And Earth is, looks like this, too. Jeez, it's nice I and do round. think it's round. I don't yes. think the Earth is flat. I'm not, I'm not that that. Josh, the, you Oh, dude. my gosh. Okay. You, you made my whole week, man. Thank you I, so I much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Golly. Okay, so time, Josh, time back in. Debt free screen back here's on. Here's what I love about you in this whole situation. That you're right, number one, that, about the moon. Is, is that you took what you're already great at, what mm-hmm. you're already doing, and you just expanded, right? You're the, the environment, the school, right? Doing sporting events. You took what you're good at, the knowledge you have, and you, that's where you plugged in, and that's where you end up making so much money. Our friend Jade Warshaw, I mean, her and her husband, Sam, musicians, and they, they did private music lessons. Like, you find the thing you're good at and see how you can make money, right? You yeah. can drive for Uber and do all of this, but there's something about what you're saying that I think is so brilliant and so great and, and causes people to be creative oh, yeah. when they have to go find a side hustle. Yeah. How many of your students would ask you, like, seriously, what are you doing? Well, how, how many kids did you get to share this this journey you're on with? Well, they, I don't. Well, I don't really talk about it at school very much okay. because I want to. I, I talk about. I try to get my students not to get off topic, and uh. I could talk about this forever. <laughs> so I, I try to stay on topic for that. 
But, I um, needed you as a teacher growing yeah. up because I get off topic quite a <laughs> but bit. But my astronomy students, though, we talk about everything in, anyway because it's, it's just it's such a fun class. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll say, did you see this movie the other day? And we'll talk about how bad the science in, in, in it was or oh, something that's like that. Good, so, yeah. Yeah. Or if like talking to a friend who's just is so clueless on actual science. Right. Oh, <laughs> and uh, you can help them how to discern friendships. Yeah, there we go. Dude, that's oh my awesome, gosh. Josh. Yeah. Um, back to you, Josh. Yeah, so hey, what, what's something you would tell somebody who is... Um, did you do this all by yourself? I did. Okay. So you're all by yourself. The teachers don't make a jillion dollars. Mm -hmm. And you said, enough is enough is enough. I'm going to do this. Um, what do you tell that person sitting at home saying, I don't make enough money. I'm all by myself. I don't have a spouse making $500,000 a year. What do you tell that person? Well, there, there are ways to do it. Again, there's side hustles, whether it's through school or not, there's things you can do for most, most schools anyway. And one thing I did when I was selling tickets, you know, we have to grade papers all the time and do planning and all that stuff, which is a pain in the butt sometimes. But when I was selling tickets, it's a big rush the first like half an hour before the game starts or right after the game starts. But most of the rest of the time I'm sitting there just twiddling my thumb. So I brought my work with me and just graded papers then. So I got paid extra for doing something I would do normally anyway. Mm. But so how do you breathe like, if you're not scrolling social media in all of your spare seconds? Yeah, I stay away from that as much as I possibly can. So. Good grief. I don't, they don't even make guys like you yeah. anymore, Josh. You're amazing. Well, I'm, on, I'm on like Facebook. That's, I mean, that's ancient now. But yeah, my students now laugh at me because they're on whatever. I don't even know what's on right now, but they're on other stuff. So great. So. I bet they love you. Yeah. Uh, so someone listening or watching is thinking, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to try this. What would you say the key of getting out of debt is? For me, it's have a goal. Um, I wanted to pay my truck off quick. wanted to have my house paid off by you know, January of next year. But I had it paid off early. Um, I want to retire, be able to retire by the time I'm 55. Mm -hmm. I'm 43 now, so I'm, I should be able to, but I'll probably still work anyway. It's still, it's still fun. Yeah. So it's just have a goal. Um, just not have to pay anybody any other Here's money. Here's what I like about me. you, Josh. You don't seem like the dramatic type, well, which not, someone not next to me may <laughs> have a level of that in his life. Yeah. But but there is something about you just do it. Yeah. You know, and like talking to you, like there's so much, you know, drama that can be associated with this where it's like, just cut stuff out yeah. and just do it. Just yeah. Like, and that's, and that's, that's the vibe yeah. as the kids would say that I'm getting from you, Josh. So what are you going to go do? What's the thing you're going to go do? Well, two things. One thing I've got a cruise this summer. Yeah. Nice. That's good for you, but man. Also one thing I did last month, my favorite band in the world journey was coming through through Greenville and don't stop believing exactly Josh. Right, yeah. <laughs> so last I was looking for tickets a few months ago and I was going to usually buy like the mid level or upper level tickets just to get in the show but I realized I don't have a, mor I don't have a mortgage payment ah, anymore. So, so I bought, I, I splurged, but I sat third row center at yes, that concert you did. and had a blast at it. It was so much fun. So Dude, good. It was a great time. That's Somewhere there's a YouTube video of Josh, <laughs> no shirt, jumping off the that's stage. Absolutely all not. Right. But all right, all right yeah. let's get to it. $96,000 paid off in three years and five months. Serving your community. You did it. House and everything. My brother, teacher Josh, let's hear your debt-free scream. Three two, one, I am debt free. Yeah. Hey, Rachel, you said something so important. If we could Love all it. just strip the drama Love away it. and just go do the thing. <laughs> just do it. Just do the thing. So good. Josh, you're Josh. my hero, my brother. Well done, Josh. And thanks for being a great teacher. We so, so appreciate amazing teachers. So thank you, Josh. You can too, America. You can too. We'll see you soon. Today's scripture of the day is Psalms 39, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. The great Maya Angelou says, if you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. That's how we know how amazing Rachel Cruz is <laughs> because she never even tries to be normal. Oh my gosh. You know what?
conspiracies just make the world go round. You know, we ask the questions they crash that not, it, that right? not everybody. <laughs> They just destroy the world. Let's go out to Charleston, South Carolina, and talk to John. What's up, John? Hey, guys. How are you all today? We are rocking on to the Breaking Dawn, brother. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm still working. I, I listen to you guys all the time, and I think you were the only ones that could probably give me some good advice on this. You need better friends, what? number one, but we can, <laughs> we can probably help. What's up? I don't, ha- I don't have too many intelligent ones. No, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> So my father passed away last year, um, and mom got you know mom's doing okay. So mom had her will written up, and I told her I didn't want to be a part of anything that she was writing. You know, do it on your own. Uh, we recommend a good attorney to her to go to. When I did get to see it when it was all finished, I feel very uncomfortable with what she did. Uh, I don't know how to handle it. Fifty um, percent to myself, twenty-five to my sister, and twenty-five to my daughter and the house has to be sold. And I, and I know why she did that, but... Why did she do that? My sister was a homeless drug addict, and um, I found her. She was homeless for about three years before I found her again. Um, she since got her life back on track, and everything is great with her. I mean, I give her nothing but huge praise for what she's done. Mm. But she's the type of person that... She's not... Um, She's all there, but like she doesn't have a driver's license and she doesn't care to get one. She doesn't have any friends, which, you know, whatever you want is fine. I mean, she, but she does go to work every day and her job means a lot to her. Um, she takes public transportation to and from. And she's living on the premise that the day that my mom is gone, that the house is just going to be hers. And, and your mom probably is wise enough and is, um, Grieve I mean, the county would that the really county should, would get it in, in a year because the taxes wouldn't get paid on. Well, and what I'm saying is, your mom knows the whole. She she is wise enough to know that the worst thing I could do for my daughter is to give her a home. Yeah. The worst thing I could do to my daughter is give her half of everything I have. But I could give it to my son, who I trust, and if he sees best fit to take care of his sister, and however he's going to do that, I trust him. Yep. And so what I don't I want just, you to do is I don't want you to pass that responsibility back to your mom. Correct. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. But you know as well as I do, that house is gone in 365 days. And then what do you do? Do you just gift it to her? I mean, I, it, I so... I'll no, you, you sell the point. house. I mean, I, you sell the house and you take the, you take the, the money. And I would probably sit down with my sister and say... Here is X number. I mean, how much money are we talking? A hundred thousand dollars? She would would go to her. It's probably six figures in the bank. The bank, the house is worth three hundred ish. Okay. Um, and, and and the money doesn't even uh, whatever I would inherit wouldn't change any day to day of my life. I mean, I've worked very hard. I've made it everything on my own. Um, but, you, but I'm not wealthy. I, I know. But listen, you know, as hard as the conversations will be. Handing your yep. sister a check for a hundred thousand dollars might kill her. Correct. Right. I'm scared that would send her down a bad road. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, it almost sounds like the conversation is one more step, which is, "Hey, mom, I will take care of my sister to the best I can." Yeah. But let's not I mean, leave twenty five percent to sister. Well, yeah, well, to the point where I wanted to get her an apartment, and you know, I was going to front it all. And then my, you know, my wife's like, no. If your name's on that lease, no. Just be prepared to pay for everything, mm-hmm. and you know, whatever she said. You know, I agree with Yeah, you know, I agree with her. So I didn't go down that route, but I don't know. It's gonna put me in a tough spot one day. It, and, here, uh, here's yeah, the other and, day and your mom. Guaranteed. How old's your mom? So she's 67, 68, but she's in really good health. Yeah. Um, she's a really active, go-getter type person. Um, yeah, and so you but, never know you what know, you know what day, life could bring you, but there could be a chance, you know, for 20, guaranteed. yeah, for, yes, but also if she could be living 20 more years, easy, you know, right. in all of this and the way life shakes out. Um, Correct. But I think it's anything it, drastic. That would probably be safe to say. Right. Right. So there is a part of me that, you know, worrying about something that isn't in, isn't imminent, 
you know, is one thing. But also, I think it is always wise, and it would be your mom's choice to do this, but we always say that once you make a will, to communicate that to everybody involved. Um, now, a situation like this, I don't know if that's more of a gift or more of a, you know, turns everyone inside out. It's a, if the it sister gets to knows. be a mess, yeah. Yeah, so, I, it, it, you know, depending on how your mom wants to communicate it or if she does. But, again, I know you're planning for what if, but thankfully it hasn't happened yet. Right. Well, and Correct. John, there, there's, this is going to be hard. There, there's not going to be an easy path forward. You're going to be yep. dealing with a sister. Is she older than you or younger than you? So she's six years younger than me. Okay. And, um, Hold on. and I was the one that brought her out for where she was. And we have a good relationship. No, I, I know you do. But you have a, a, a sister who's six years younger than you that probably has no retirement, has no um, or limited insurance, health insurance, life insurance, etc. So you are being wise to look f down the road, whether it's 10 years, right. 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. There may come a day when you're going to be charged with the care of your sister. Correct. And so I think there's some wisdom in putting your cards on the table, having that conversation with your wife. Like, I think your wife is smart for you to not put your name on a lease. I also think you need to be honest about telling your wife, I can't just let my sister go back under a bridge. If that's going to be your, if that's going to be your thought process. So what do you have to do now planning wise to make this thing happen? But I think in some weird way, you were hoping that your mom's will would kind of, ah, it's and, not on me feeling. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's just, that's not who you are. You're a man of responsibility. You're a man who loves his family. You're a man who went and got his sister, dude. And I could get choked up and hug you. Um, yeah. We need more men like you. And there's not going to be an easy path forward. There is a path that you can plan for. Um, and don't don't violate you and your wife's marriage um, covenant. But, um, dude, I, I think it's just being wise about what's, what's coming down the road, however hard those conversations are going to be. Well, I sure do um, appreciate the insight on that. I really do. Yeah, you betcha. And also, I love what Rachel said. Keep this in mind. Um, if you come from a tough home, it, growing up was tough. Um, sometimes we solve tough childhoods by over planning. Correct. We try to grab variables out in the ether before they're even issues and solve them before they're problems. And you're reaching way into the future, hopefully. Uh, yes. Yes. Correct. One hundred percent on that. I mean, that's yes. I mean, everything. Like I said, anything can happen tomorrow. But I was just wanting to try to wrap my mind around it and get my duck somewhat in a row yeah, down yeah, the road. You know? for sure. Which man, is totally fair. You're a it's good. A you're a good guy, man. That's that's yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for calling. I know because that conversation between even with him and his sister, even down the road, right? You look ten years, twenty years. And it's still like, what is the, what is a gift to someone? What is enabling someone? When is it my responsibility? When is it not? And we've had a lot of calls on this show of people, of adult children that are like, I have to take care of my parents. Uh, there was a call, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was recent, but the parent was making like $300,000 a year and just burning through it. Yeah. And it's like, where, where is it your responsibility to quote unquote honor, right? right. Your parents and all of that. You look at brother sister relationships. You look at friends, but I feel like you do a good job of just knowing what's what's the healthy boundary here because there is a boundary. There is a boundary, and it might be, I think, where people may misconstrue. It. I'll just say me. If my parents have burned through all their money, I'm not going to not take care of my parents, but I'm going to take care of them in the way that I can do it. And if I can yeah. only afford X place, then that's where they're going to have to go. Yeah. I'm not going to mortgage my future and my soul for some big fancy stuff. Right. Rather, taking right? care of your immediate family right. first. And that's the same with John, taking care of his immediate family first. So that he can and take care beyond. of And then beyond. Yes. Right. Yeah. So well, good. hey, that's the third hour here on The Ramsey Show. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for all the gang out in the booth, especially Taylor and Emily and the mighty Joe. We'll see you soon, America.